Hey YouTube, here's another artistic noise project tutorial. I'm going to cover kick drums this time around. Uh, this part of the video just wanted to cover some real quick theory and I wanted to use as an example to move us through that theory. Um, an example this uh, notion of layering kick drums. I'm sure you guys have seen that, probably even done it, and maybe wondered why the composite kick drum that you have at the end of it doesn't quite sound the way you thought it would. So I've picked two Vengeance samples, which in and of themselves you can see are really good looking. Uh, they're not saturating uh, that one or this one, and they seem to have constant energy throughout. However, when we go and export these, all right, we're going to mute them out and have them be the only two tracks that we're going to export. We'll call this a uh, kick drum. Uh, kicks, I'll call it B. Composite kicks, export them. And take a look at our wave that results from it. And you see that in some places it's saturated. Other places we've lost energy altogether. And this isn't really ideal. This isn't what we're looking for. So why is it doing this? Well, I would um, advise if you have time, this would be well worth uh, any effort you put into it to understand the whole notion of how waves get added or you know, sometimes interfere with each other and result in a loss of energy. Um, this guy goes into some good detail here and over here, so what these waves mean and what they're doing, but in a nutshell, uh, the higher these waves, the greater the amplitude, the more voltage or energy we're going to push through our speakers, and the more energy your audience is going to feel, and that's what we're after. So how do we get that done without saturating and going over unity? Well, as you heard on the intro, um, Dead Mouse is pretty good at doing that. So let's look at some of his kick drums and find out what they look like. This is the one from Cthulhu Sleeps, and here's one from his sample pack. Um, sorry, I see the word on this is Cthulhu Sleeps, and this is one from his sample pack. Oh, let's look at the Cthulhu Sleeps one. Um, actually, this is a better example of what he does. Um, you see, he got a nice, crisp, in, you know, introduction of the kick that gets the, the listener's attention. This right here, in a club with a good sound system, this is what they're going to feel, right? This part over here usually gets tuned. Um, some other artists tune them. Um, but anyway, you can generate this. As you can see, it's a perfect sine wave, right, that gets kind of tapered off. You can generate this using Massive or any other synth, and that's what we're going to do. But this has the three elements of a really good kick drum. But in particular, see how close he gets to Unity without ever saturating? None of these waves are cut off, given the most amount of energy possible. So I don't know how he did it. I have some guesses um, that I've pulled together from other tutorials and my own experience, and that's what I hope to get across on this video. The best place to start is to make sure your the audio samples you're starting with are the best they can be. Um, I recommend using the Vengeance packs and the transfer samples that uh, Duda did with uh, Dead Mouse. Um, these are really clean recordings. Um, I know the argument against that is that they're overplayed, but uh, the whole point of this tutorial is to gain some you know, ownership over these samples and make them your own by applying certain uh, processing to them. So um, that said, well, I've gone ahead and picked this uh, particular sample here from the transfer and this one here from the Vengeance packs. Um, let me go ahead and show you what they sound like. It's this one. Okay, and then here's this one. That's just a little flick. Your mixer, what you want to do is grab the out that comes from the tracks that are hosting those individual samples and combine them into one track. In this case, I've called it kick drum. And so the outs from those went into this kick drum. So the out from that kick drum obviously is going to go over here into the stereo out. In the stereo out, what I've done is added this cool little feature, this oscilloscope. Um, all this does here is track 
the output over time. And uh, this is going to help us see the effects of this different processing in real time. Um, you can, of course, export waves along the way, but that's pretty time consuming. This will show you in real time what's going on. Let's see what the effects are of this particular processor on our wave. Um, here's our oscilloscope and little quick thing about this IDR technology if you have a chance to read about what it is. Um, this tells you a little bit about what it is and who made it, but basically uh, every time you process a wave it loses a little bit of fidelity. And this technology here is a way of making up that loss in a way that doesn't make it sound bad, right? So, a little brand of science that I thought was pretty cool. It's called Psychoacoustics. Um, again, it's well worth your time to read this little thing here. It's actually a little bit more than just how to use this thing. Actually, got some cool stuff in it. In any case, um, this is going to achieve what we want. What we wanted to do, remember, was to get nice and fat without uh, saturating, and that's exactly what this guy's going to do. So, let me just show you what the effects are. It's kind of cool. So, here it comes. There's our wave right there. All right. And here's without. It's saturating, sounding kind of weird, right? But these are the settings I found work. But let me just play around with this thing and see what it does to the wave. If I go all the way down, it just creates an average um, peak for this whole thing that's all the way to the top. If I go up to the top, and it just leaves it alone. Right. So what worked for me was right around here someplace. So I still got a tail, but I am getting the most out of the body of that kick drum. Right around six and a half, seven, right around there. I really don't want to attenuate too much. So that's kind of kind of weird. But that there it is right there. And again, freeze this thing and kind of look over your work and see what it's done. You know, compared to you know what it looked like at the beginning, it's kind of all over the place, and this thing is now nice up and solid. So that's that part of the wave. Next thing is this intro click here. This guy, I like the flicking sound in, in my kick drums, and that's what all I wanted out of this. I don't do a lot to this part of the wave. All I do is use um, this. Uh, EQ right here, just knock down all the frequencies below 60, make sure I don't get anything muddling up all this you know, low frequency stuff I worked hard to create up there, and then uh, a limiter, but uh, this is just killing the transient setting here, uh, just to make sure I don't get any transients, but that shouldn't happen because we don't really have any here. But this is the initial kick, so you do want to have it in the to prevent that should it happen. Um, so let's see what this sounds like together. All right, cool. So we see here that we're getting that average uh, amplitude nice and high. We're not anywhere near saturating, right, which is up here someplace. So now let's see what's going on here in this composite track. Right? Cause we're pumping both of those sounds into this composite track. Um, so this and all I've done here is added this little guy here. This envelope shaper is something else. Um, remember when we saw our wave here? See how it's all kind of just got an average in the middle kind of thing going on there. Well, that's where this guy comes in. Play this without it and then freeze this. All right, now let's turn this guy on here. And now you see how he's picked up the beginning of that wave? That's this portion right here. Let me exaggerate it for effect. And get rid of it for effect. So if you like that initial little flick there, that's where I've done this. And that's why I left some headroom there, so we could kind of play with that right there. Same thing with the tail. This guy affects the tail, and it makes it go out too. You can give it this kind of bell-shaped, or you can come in with it. This is what I prefer right here, so it sounds cool to me. Um, again, this is all subjective, really. So, 
once I have the wave more or less looking how I want it, I'm going to go ahead and export this thing here. So you look at this wave here. See if we get what we wanted. Now this is pretty much what I wanted here. I wanted a nice hard click when it came in and then a nice even amount of energy over here. And my little cone fading out. Now with the tools I showed you, right, with the envelope shaver and with uh, the maximizer, you can control how big this is. You can control how tall that is and how long this tail is. So if you're not happy with the sound, focus on the shape and use your tools to sort of start carving this thing out. The last thing I do is to bring this in on the very last channel. Go ahead and put a compressor on it. And this is just to gel everything together. I don't really... You look at the settings here. Just a little bit right there, and that's it. And so what does this sound like? Getting really close to what I want. This is still clipping, though, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. Right around there. And the only other thing after that is to EQ it. And that I leave, once I have this as part of a song, I'll go ahead and maybe do something like this. I'll go ahead and turn this guy on too because he's got a bunch, he's just killing everything that happens below these frequencies and let your baseline do some work there. Um, but again, I leave that at the end. It's mostly to taste, see how it sounds along with the rest of the song. But that's pretty much it. So I hope these tools have helped you get an understanding of uh, how they affect waveforms. Usually, if you have any questions, let me know.